Broadcasting deep within the rat-infested sewers of Baltimore City, it's time for your favorite podcast ninjas, The Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Each week we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and the Artoverse. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. Right, Pete? That's right. None. I'm your host, Mike Cavis, and joining me on this episode is my co-host, Peter the Blix Bryant. <laughs> hey, look at me. I'm a co-host. Yes, you're a co-host. I'm driving. And this episode, we are joined by our buddy, Ben Bishop. Ben has wanted to make comics since he was four years old. He wrote to Marvel at age 11 asking for a job, but finding out that it was not only illegal to hire an 11-year-old, but that his skills weren't quite there yet. Ben went back to the drawing board, <laughs> see what he did there, and to Mr. Morley's fifth grade classroom. Ben later moved to Portland, Maine to attend Maine College of Art. After one great year and some loans that <clears throat> didn't quite go through, he was forced to leave, but... He realized that the only real way that he could make comics was that he should just make comics. And, ladies and gentlemen, make comics is what he did. He made the aggregate, a split decision, choose your own adventure esque. Are we allowed to say that? They don't have a, they don't have a, a line on. Uh, right? Choose your own adventure style. Yeah, esque. Yeah. Esque. <laughs> a split yeah. decision. Esque. Uh, comic. Um, he did Nathan the Caveman, his own story. Uh, he also s established Bish, the Bish Art Kids Club, Art the Bish Art Kids Club, and that's right. He is here tonight to talk mainly about Drawing Blood Volume Two, the Drawing Blood comic that is vastly, vastly coming to an end on Kickstarter. But Ben, there are there is time left for you to sell this thing to our our uh, our fans. Uh, tell us about what you got going on. Uh-oh. <laughs> all, right. all right, you're back. So okay. <laughs> you froze yeah. for a second. So I read a bunch yeah, of Yeah, he's meets. been he's been freezing a couple times. I wasn't Am I freezing or is yeah. my freezing? No, you oh, were freezing. It was, freezing. it was a little cold. But hey, tell us what you got going on. I, I read a bunch of nice yeah. stuff that you did. <laughs> yeah, you 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 guys have been uh with Oh, something just happened. Sorry. We're good. Hey, hey, ben, My computer's Mike, going nuts. Can you, um, yeah, how can he, uh, Mike, how do we do? Because this is a, folks, this is a new platform we're using. How does he turn his, uh, uh, is it under uh, settings? You'd have to go into the settings and you could turn your stream, your uh, send and receive down a little bit. But um, <clears throat> you're you're coming through okay right now. Um, All right, we'll give it a it shot. A small glitch, yeah. Um, so um, this uh, let's just start off. Tell us what you got uh, going on. Yeah. Well, that was an awesome <laughs> intro. I've been hanging out and talking with you guys for years now. Um, I was telling my wife I wasn't nervous at all to come on because we're like old chums now. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're, we're fans, yeah. man. We're fans and friends. Friends and yeah. fans. <laughs> well, you guys, of course. Yeah, you guys backed uh, Drawing Blood Volume 1, I believe. We went on and talked about that a couple years ago. There it mm -hmm. is there. Um, I believe it was 2016 we did the Kickstarter for Drawing Blood Volume 1. So Drawing Blood, for those who don't know, uh, is co-created and co-written by Kevin Eastman, who's the co-creator of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Uh, um, and the, it's written, the, the, the what if The what ninja who? Yeah, what is that? I'll slow it down. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, gotcha. so um, – and the writer of this book is David Avaloni. So back in 2016, we – wanted to make this book i'm the artist on it and it's kind of the fictional true story of how the turtles were created but instead of kevin eastman it's this guy shane bookman and instead of creating the teenage mutant ninja turtles together him and his brother paul created the radically rearranged ronin rag dolls there you and go so right there. they are uh let me see if i can get a good shot they are samurai sushi eating cats named after famous anime directors uh miyazaki tezuka in the middle and then a tomo over here so 
no more Renaissance painters. It's all about the anime creators. Um, and so this is the this is technically the 1992 comic that Shane and Paul created. And so so that's everything we were able to put together for uh, the Kickstarter a few years ago. Drawing Blood Volume One was uh, essentially four issues long with a nice hearty making of section in the back. Um, we raised 106,000 bucks to make it happen. Our goal for Drawing Blood was 75,000, and the goal to unlock the rag dolls for everyone was 100 and so we passed that yeah congratulations so, you're up at yeah, 101 yeah. or so 102 uh well that was all for the first kickstarter so that was a couple years ago um now we're in the middle of the same exact process we're trying to fund drawing blood volume two which will be the next four chapters five six seven eight nice making of section um and we're going to continue the saga of shane bookman and so that goal was at seventy five thousand as well which we hit um a bit ago this time we hit it early i think maybe like a week and a half ago um, but just yesterday we knocked out the hundred thousand dollar stretch goal so now everyone who backs at drawingbloodcomic.com until the end of the month it ends on august 31st will get a double size ragdolls issue and it's a whole new kind of ragdolls it's called the the radically rearranged ronin ragdolls adventure series so it's kind of like when in the ninja turtle world they got uh you know colorized and and uh and sort of kidified. That's the comic we are now giving everyone for free. Um, and then the final stretch goal, unless things totally take off and we need to think of more, is 125000 And with that, you're going to get a free 48-page Kevin Eastman sketchbook. We say it's the Shane Bookman sketchbook, but it's all Kevin's sketches that he did when he was coming up with the designs for these cats here. Um, and what's really cool is Kevin actually does keep the real sketchbook. So the sketchbook that we're going to print for everyone is literally the same exact sketchbook that he has in his house right now. So he like tapes in the drawings and he writes notes and stuff. And what's even cooler about this one is he did it all as if he were Shane Bookman. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I really want to unlock that. That is cool. So not that you haven't checked like right before or maybe even have it pulled up as you're um, casting with us, but you're at, one o you're at 104, 104,000 right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, five eighty-five backers. So that's really awesome, man. You got four days to go. Uh, yeah. So um, if you're watching this live, you definitely need to go and do this. Uh, if yeah. um, people are catching this after the fact, how can they still um, get on board with some of this goodness? Sure. Yeah. So everything we're doing through the Kickstarter, it will definitely pay to get it through the Kickstarter. Like um, even the trade for Volume One, you can only get this now. Um, the overprint copies that we had over what we needed for Kickstarter were very few. Um, and so you can only get it now if you like find us at a convention. We don't sell it on our online shops or anything like that. And it's, it's essentially the same with the rag dolls. Um, so to answer your question, once the Kickstarter is over, it, it'll be a bit of a, a wait before you can see Drawing Blood again or rag dolls again. And what will happen is what we did um, with volume one was we went to the retail market um, several months later and we broke it up into issues. So there was an issue one that hit actual store shelves um, and, and went all the way to four. So it did everything that was from um, Drawing Blood volume one. Issue four is actually next Wednesday, I believe, at all comic stores that may have ordered it. And then what that also allowed us to do was put out um, different rag doll um, variant covers, so different versions of that same issue one. But the one that, um, that you had held up before Pete, uh, yes. that was my, that's my Kickstarter exclusive cover. So for example, like that's, that's the one you could only get if you backed the first Kickstarter. Hold it um, up again. Yeah. Hold it up, Pete. I'm, now I got you shown. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Look at that. So, yeah. so everything we're doing through the Kickstarter right now will be, you know, a unique version that you can only get there. Um, but otherwise you'll want to get just, if you do miss it, you check out drawingbloodcomic.com and, It'll no longer lead you to the Kickstarter, but it'll lead you to a site with some information and stuff like that. Awesome. Yeah. So let me. Uh, so I have a. Uh, I had some questions about your process and everything. Now I know. Um, so most comic books, they have like you know you have your your penciler and your inker and your letterer and your colorer and all that. Are you all four of those things for this stuff? Um, for any of this, for anything. For anything, no, I don't, the only, well, for some stuff, for covers a lot, I'll do my own colors because okay. um, it's kind of like a one-off, something very, you know, doable. When I'm talking about the interiors of an actual comic book, like page after page, when I know that I've got, you know, hundreds of more pages after that, I don't want to stop 
final workflow and jump over to colors and then vice versa. I wouldn't want to spend two years on a book and then go back to page one and do all the colors because it right. just never ever get done. It's so much nicer when someone can color it as you're working on the pages right ahead of them, you know. So, but on the covers, I do do that. Otherwise, um, my actual process, all my pages, and then anyone who watches my live videos hears me say this all too often, uh, but I, I, don't, I don't ink anything. So my inks are actually finished pencils, pressed down really hard, keep it nice and clean. Um, and I scan those directly in. So every page of comic book you've ever seen from me is pencil, which is oh, tricks a lot of people. And then my roughs, which would normally be pencil, are all digital. So I do my digital roughs on the tablet, can spin stuff around, blow it up, um, uh, reverse it, whatever I got to do, scrap it. Um, and I print those out onto a sheet of 11 by 17. And then I put a new sheet of paper over it. I don't know if you guys can see my desk here. Use the light table? Yeah. And then I click <laughs> on this guy. Right. See that? Yeah. And I'm able to shine light through the page, just like in the old animation days. And then I'll have a nice, clean, finished piece. But, but yeah, so my pencils are digital and my inks are pencils. <laughs> nice. So <laughs> yeah. as, a, as a real quick aside, let me just say that if you aren't following Ben <clears throat> now, follow him on uh, Facebook at uh, Bishart, B-I-S-H-A-R-T. Uh, he yeah. will go live uh, <laughs> occasionally. I don't know if you have a schedule for this, but he'll go live and you'll see him. He'll just start. He'll draw and then he'll do the the, the penciling and, yeah. and the coloring. And it's just it's it is really um, a cool thing. Like I, sometimes I'll just have it on as I'm watching at work, and I mean as, oh, as I'm working, and I'll just kind of watch and stuff. It's yeah. Uh, I, I, see, I see you pop in on the live videos. It's fun to see who like joins in. Yeah. And lately they've been getting a lot of action. Uh, because we've been doing throughout the Kickstarter, we've been doing these fun draw off things. Um, mm -hmm. I did one with Troy Little, who's the he's the main artist on the Ragdolls book. Um, he's got that more um, animated style than I do. Um, and so we did a draw off. We made these like crazy. I don't know if you guys saw these. We made these crazy like like wrestling intimidation kind of uh, previews for the whole thing. I don't know if you saw those. You gotta watch them. But Troy made one where. You know, he's calling himself the Canadian and, and he's like taunting me and like banging on a chain link fence and stuff. And so, so then I made my rebuttal video where it just went completely off the rails and I ended up like killing my trainer in the video, but he was an Android like from alien with the, with the white blood milk. And it was amazing. Where do we, uh, but where anyway, do we see these videos? <laughs> yeah, those are all somewhere. I mean, if you search drawing blood, draw off, you might find them okay. on YouTube, but they're definitely, they're definitely on the Drawing Blood Facebook page, which is just facebook.com slash drawing blood comic. Sure. Um, and they're really, really funny. And the whole point being, we did those to amp up this event where we would draw on some sketch covers and then take the highest bids. And then whoever won gets the sketch covers, of course. But then we put that money right into the Kickstarter. And so um, that was able to raise, that night we raised like 10 grand um, between oh. the two of them. Yeah. So we jumped, we jumped big that night. And then we did it again um, last weekend when, uh, Kevin Eastman, David Avaloni, and I were all in New Mexico for uh, Albuquerque show, and we did another draw from the hotel. It was uh, me, Kevin, David was the kind of the ringleader narrator guy, and uh, reading the bids and whatnot. And then we had uh, another turtle artist, Andy Kuhn, join us, and we raised another, I think, thirteen thousand that night. So we got some big jumps by thinking outside the box and doing these sort of live videos. Obviously, we're we're selling art at the same time, but we sync it all right into the Kickstarter. Hey, awesome. hey, yeah. Pete, are yeah. you uh, you thinking what I'm thinking? Like when you put... you guys didn't do a draw? <laughs> no, no, but well, you know what? No. We need to do maybe more like streaming games like during your Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 yeah. That's that's part of the plan for for when we relaunch. Um, That'll be cool. Yeah. So so, <laughs> and but you you should come on. You should come on and play. So I sent you a demo copy of the game, right? I know you're, yeah. you're like, oh, rules. It's easy. If I run it, all you have to do is play. It's real simple. You should come on. And I think play. we should we should do that like live where you yeah. explain mm -hmm. to me like yeah. exactly how to do it because I'm just so overwhelmed by games. I buy all the games because I love them. Like I have the mm -hmm. thing board game from Mondo that they did. Can't for the life of me figure it out. I have the crazy uh, IDW Ninja Turtle games they did with like 300 little figures and stuff. Can't right. for the life of me figure out the directions. But I'm so glad to have them, and they're so well done. And that was my main feedback about yours. I was like, I was like, damn, this is like a real game. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, hey. I have no idea how to play it. All right, Ben. I'm a ben, game designer. Ben, it's a date. All right. When, All when right. he goes live, it. we're we're getting you on, and we're gonna, we're yeah. gonna run through. It's we'll get least, you and two other people. I can do. 
Yeah, right. it'll be fun. The least no, I can do, because you guys have had me on for every one of my kicks. No, awesome. no, and it, it's a fun yeah. game. It's a lot of fun. You'll like it. I mean, and, and nice. you know, people are always like, oh, I'm so stupid. I got all these questions wrong. I'm like, you're not stupid. Everybody gets all the questions wrong. It's a trivia game. You ever play Trivial Pursuit? That's, that's, <laughs> it's hard, right? You'll yeah. get them right. It's just, you know, you just got to be the last person standing. That's it. Right. Just be the last person. Because it's a combat. You actually play against people, and you get to roll like dice it. to do damage. It's fun. What so, I like most about it, and this is what's going to give you such success on Kickstarter, is how passionate you are about it. Like, that's the main thing. Like, when you see people do these Kickstarters, and in their video, they're not even in it or on their page. It's just like, here's my product. Here's how much it costs. Like, like you can't expect people to care about what you care about if you're not showing that you actually do. Right. Um, so, yeah, I can tell just by, like, when you sent it to me, and then you were, you were, you know, nagging me to say something. And I was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And, like, <laughs> like I know how excited you are about it. So, I am. it's good. I am very excited. Yeah. So, we have, we have some, let's, let's do the chat room. So, we got some questions, or we got some things in the chat room. So, oh, good. Uh, talking about the, the live stream, uh, Sean Taft said, uh, he said that was an awesome live stream, even though Troy cheated. Uh, yeah, do you want to <laughs> hear about that? You want to know yeah. what happened there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. so, so Troy is drawing, you know, we're both drawing. Um, I have a kind of rabid fan base because of that uh, Bishart Kids Club I told you about. I started yeah. my own, like, Burger King Kids Club kind of thing where we all hang out and talk. They've all become great friends with each other. We've all become great friends with each other. Um, but anyway, so they're on there. They're bidding on stuff. So mine's going way up. I'm like, I think my cover was at, like, 3,000 or something, and Troy was down at, like, 300. And he, like, legitimately, I felt bad. He, he looked like he was upset. He's like, oh, I don't know. He's like, where's all the love? Where's all the love? He finishes his drawing, and we have, like, 10 minutes left of the competition, and he just goes, oh, what's this? And he flips it over, and there's a whole Kevin Eastman drawing on the back of his sketch cover that he had had Kevin do, like, weeks earlier in Montreal. <laughs> Uh, and so I spent like the next 25 minutes just like cursing at it, like you <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> just, and uh, obviously the money all went to the Kickstarter, so it was good for everyone. But I didn't want to lose. I made those right. intimidating videos and stuff. Um, huh. I think I and I and I think I came in second place again with the New Mexico one, obviously because Kevin was there as well. Right. So one day. <laughs> somebody wants to buy your marlin they said how much for the marlin <laughs> so my dad my dad caught that um it's actually a, a terror it's a cast of the fish he caught and right he gave it to me because uh-oh because 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 oh. right so right. Gotta, 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 gave him to you for, the... because what you you froze up oh sorry because uh he said it looked too fake <laughs> oh, okay and so he said he said that's not what it actually looked like when i caught it and so um so i've carried it around with me from apartment to apartment for like over a decade now what's his name yeah. uh i don't know he's got some blue meth in his mouth right now though so maybe i'll call him he heisenberg nice oh nice oh god yeah. that reminds me so all right at some point yeah. when we when we I, when we start to bullshit a little bit i put a pin in that you want to talk about the trailer uh, no, no, no. I want to talk oh. about. I just, I, it's this very happenstance that I'm, I'm uh, okay. actually watching. Um, uh, last week, I decided I would binge watch, um, the uh, what do you call it? Breaking Bad again? Just out of out of nowhere, yeah. I just decided that I wanted to do that. How, is this your second time? Yes, yes. Yeah, I've done it. I don't know if you've seen my, like but I, I think fucking times or something. No, right? I think I think I'm literally no joke, maybe on like thirteen or fourteen or so. <laughs> Um, wow. it's just like the, with shows, like when I'm drawing, I usually have to listen to music, but with, with Breaking Bad or The Office, I can just have it on and I know exactly what's happening without having to look up and I look up when I want to. Um, yeah. and so it's like the perfect rewatchable show for that. And you know, what's funny about that show is that <clears throat> I came very late into the game on it. Everybody's talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, right? And I'm like, yeah, I really got to do this. I really got to do this. But I came in late and I was like, oh, I got all these seasons to catch up on. So I started watching it, and I binged the whole friggin' thing right up until um, I think there was like three episodes left of three oh, of man. the last episodes yeah. left. So I caught up to the to the to the very end, and I watched the last like three lot, you know, like on TV. Yeah. And I have to say that the the hype was everything everybody said it was, and I yeah. honestly believe it is probably. One of the best. It's def well, no, it's definitely one of the best. It may be the best crafted series because oh, yeah. it's five seasons and that was perfect. Any longer oh, yeah. 
and it would have started to tank. Right? They, I, I, I did the exact same thing as you. It's so funny you say that because I was racing to catch up so that I could see the end live because I waited and I waited and I waited. Yeah. And like so many other people, I'll recommend Breaking Bad to, and they'll try it. And for whatever reason, they can't get through the first few episodes, which I think are some of my favorite. Yeah. I mean, maybe oh, it's yeah. a hindsight yeah. thing, uh-huh. but they think it's slow and they expected something different. But like, so I just say like, stick with it, stick with it. Cause you will not, it's, I think, no, nope, it's the best character writing ever. Like, mm-hmm. like yes. his arc, I've never <sighs> seen anything like it. It's banana. All right. Can, so can I, I say this real quick? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I, I had no idea that it was going to have this effect on me. I am now on season uh, four and I'm midway through season four. So Fring's dead. Oh, uh, spoiler alert. No, <laughs> Fring's oh, dead. Uh, you know, now they started doing the, the tent and, you know, cooking yeah. and um, Skylar is like freaking out and stuff. So yeah. I'm right around that area. And uh, there uh, I think the next episode that I'm going to watch is they have to rob the train for the methyl. Oh, that's oh. a good one. Yeah, I know. That one is so good. <laughs> so, hey, so, OK, oh, so okay, good, Mike. hold on, because it's 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 just so weird that the first time I watched it. Right. I was so like just wanting and pulling to love and want to support uh Walter and hmm. this time around I'm like what a fucking dick like oh, yeah. what a dick like he really is like a screw up <laughs> and yeah. and like uh you know he just he, he's talking about everyone else who flew too close to the sun and all this shit like yeah he he is an Icarus motherfucker, first of all. So. Well, what he does, what he does also is he embodies on your rewatches. You'll probably see this, but he embodies everything about the people he didn't, you know, like he disagreed with. He becomes Tuco. He becomes Gus. Yeah. Like he puts the towel down when he pukes, mm-hmm. um, just like Gus. He cuts his crust off the sandwich, just like the the kid in the beginning, God, the Tampico right. kid. He felt like so he's just like he's like a sponge and takes it all in. So you he's growing worse and worse. Um, and he's a character you're not supposed to like. But yeah. then when you find that you do, you're like, oh, shit, I'm a shitty person. And it's <laughs> like you're rooting for these people. And so I, I also think they did such a good job of, like, making you see, like, Jesse kept trying to get out and get out and get out. And, like, yeah. you couldn't. So, like, you do have somebody to root for. But yeah. in a lot of ways, Je- Jesse's art goes the opposite direction. Uh, exactly. So cool. Yep. So good. Yeah, it's very good. No, it's, Blows it's so my good. mind. Oh, j- just real quick. So. Apparently, uh, what's this? Uh, it, it was Ryan Burris, I believe, who wants to buy the fish. So he said, he said to tell yeah. you who it was. <laughs> he, yeah, he's a bitch kid. Is but okay? he's broke. He spent all his money on me already this month for Drawing okay. Blood. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold off. Um, but well, yeah, Drawing Blood is actually super Breaking Bad. I mean, it, to me, it has that tone. Um, like, look at the cover of issue one. I don't know if you can see it with the glare, yeah. but. It's very Walter White in his underwear, right? Oh my yeah, God, yeah. you're right! Yeah. Holy shit! Um, and uh, there's some uh, a little bit of a, a nudity warning, maybe. I don't know who how old your audience is, but no, I'll cover them up. But like the show. very the very beginning of draw, uh, drawing blood, that's that first issue, and so yeah. I just love that about that this character because he, he's not a terrible person. He's not like Walt, you know, mm-hmm. like, but he is a guy who's going through this huge arc, like any good you know, character story would be. And it's about a guy who, you know, came up with this billion dollar franchise when he was in his late twenties, like 27, um, did a bunch of stuff like Kevin Eastman did, bought a tank. Kevin Eastman bought the tank from Red Dawn. Like, nice. so, so like drawing blood is like sprinkled with all these, like all these things that did happen, all these things that didn't happen, all these things that are similar to something that maybe happened to David Avalone, the writer. Um, and they just put them all in this pool and then, it's all about this guy like trying to find his inspiration again. You know, he sold the rights to the rag dolls in the nineties and now he's trying to do something new. And, and, and funny enough, what he's trying to do in this book is um, put on a musical of the famous silent movie Metropolis. Uh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that's that one picture. Okay. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, so it's just like, all, it's just like almost like a fool's errand, but I have a feeling when it all goes down, it's going to be good, you know, oh, and, good. Um, I don't know. I don't know what happens. Uh, I get the scripts as they come in. Um, oh, oh exciting. So you don't even know. Okay, yeah. excellent. No, I know. I know a lot of bullet points of like where certain things are headed, but I'll, even David's pretty cagey about it. I'll ask him, and he's like, "Well, you'll we'll see." Kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Hey, so so wait a minute, real quick, Randy. Uh, before we get off, before we get too far from from uh, Breaking Bad, Randy uh, MacArthur says, uh, "What exactly do you think happened at the end of the series when it went dark?" 
Like, I think he died. I think it's just, I think it's, he died. So, you want me to talk about it? Yeah, uh, go ahead. So, I think we all think he died, and we love that he died. It's the perfect ending, because we knew the show was ending. Like you said, and I said, we caught up so we could do the last three episodes. They went out on a high note. They were selling freaking Breaking Bad t-shirts at Urban Outfitters. Like it was like more popular than it had ever been. And they mm-hmm. were like, no, we're good. We're done. We're not going to milk this like loss. We're not just going to keep yes. it going. So we all knew it was ending. So we were expecting a really good ending. And we got a really good ending. But in our brains, we said, oh, Walt's dead. But if you think about that last shot, where A, a he passes out all yeah. the time in the show. Yes. That last shot in particular is straight out of, uh, the season earlier where he was under the floorboards and Walter and uh, mm. uh, his wife, Skyler, yeah. Yeah. had spent all the money by giving it to um, her affair. What's his name? Uh, 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 you know who I'm talking about. But anyway, it's the exact Ted. same shot. It comes up through the floorboards mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. And it just like shakes. He's not breathing. He's not doing anything. And so the more and more I think about it, I'm like, maybe he wasn't. And not that I want that, but now we know. Uh-oh. What happened? All right, we lost Ben. Oh, he'll, we be lost ben. ben'll be back. Ben will be back. He'll be back. Um, yeah, because uh, damn it! All right, so uh, when he comes back, uh, and he's not gonna be able to hear this, but um, hopefully he'll find the link and come back. But um, yeah, right. <laughs> he'll find it. Um, 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 um I up. always told you, Pete. I don't know if uh, I did tell you this or not, but I always said that. Uh, I always said that I wanted him to die. I mean, I didn't want him to die. I wanted everyone else around him to die, especially his family, so that he lived on with a, that huge mound of money, and then he had worked so hard for his family, and he had right. no one, you know, and, and no one was going to be able to use it, you know, and then he was yeah. going to die. Uh, to me, that would have been the best know. type of thing. Yeah, I don't um, know. No, I, I, I did. I liked... Um... If anybody's watching, Ben will be back. We, I sent him a thing to, to jump back on. Um, he can even come in on his phone if he has to. I don't know if his computer died or what. Yeah, it but, sounds um, like it was a hard crash. So, um, anyway, let's talk about – right. I, I like I liked the way it ended. I thought it was perfect. But let's talk about that trailer real quick, this, this short trailer. Yeah. Was that, was, was that Skinny Pete? Is that who that was? I didn't look it up. I thought that's who it was. Or was it somebody else? All right. Is that a different so character? When, when did that trailer drop? I don't know. Last week? Yeah, so I didn't see it yet. So I, I, I'm so bad. I, oh, my God. There he is. I know. Okay. okay. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know what you talked about when I was gone. But... Uh, no, <laughs> we, we, we moved on to the trailer, but go ahead. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So th- now we know that there's the, the trailer for the Netflix show coming. <sighs> And right. in my mind, I'm like, why would they ever do something like this unless there was a story to tell? You know, Vince isn't – the creators aren't going to milk Breaking Bad. They cut it off when they knew it was at the height of its popularity. And so, like, what is so important that they're going to tell yeah. in the amount of time – like, that movie is about the length of two episodes. Mm-hmm. Like, what are they going to do? Mm-hmm. And so I'm really excited about it. I feel like uh, with Better Call Saul, I don't know if you've watched that. I watched some But that's of it. mm-hmm. it's coming closer and closer to – where Breaking Bad was, yeah. you know, because it's a prequel. But they have these spots in the beginning and the ends of the season that are black and white, which is um, Saul post Breaking Bad. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, I just, I just have this feeling when Saul ends, that black and white scene is just going to slowly come into color, and then like Jesse's going to like throw his hands on the Cinnabon counter or something and be like, "Hey, I need you," and it's going to like end. You're like, "What the hell?" Like, Cinnabons, oh. bitch. <laughs> that yeah. would be, yeah, that would be pretty like, epic. Who knows what they're going to do, but yeah, I, no. I have faith that they wouldn't be doing a Netflix show unless they had a story to tell. Let's wow. see. So, Let's see. Oh, Anywho. So, wow. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I, uh, and it was just very ironic. And, and I, I, uh, it was just before you came on. I mean, literally seconds before I had admitted, I hadn't even seen the, uh, I heard about it two days ago and I hadn't had a chance to watch the, um, the trailer. The trailer. So, oh, yeah. yeah. It's, I'm going to watch it as soon as we uh, all hang up. But, uh, not, oh, you short. haven't watched it? It's a short trailer. Yeah. It's just, yeah. It, is, that, is that Skinny Pete? Yeah, it's Skinny Pete. Um, thought, what, okay. Pay attention to, like, look for Easter eggs, like, right okay. off the bat. Sure. They're, okay. they're right there. Nice. Oh, all right. 
How how funny is that that, that that this news dropped without me even knowing? And I just I decided just like ah, I'm gonna I, I was saying it to three different people recently. I was just like, you know what? I think I'm gonna watch rewatch Breaking Bad. And then one day after the third day the, that night, I was just like, I started watching the first four episodes. Got to bed at four in the morning. You know how right. it goes. <laughs> yeah, that's happened to me with yeah. uh, Stranger Things. Like everybody was talking about Stranger Things, and I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna check it. I'll just it was like it was like I don't know, it was like nine o'clock at night on a work night, and I'm like. I'll just check out an episode and see if I yeah. like it, you know. 2 a.m. Yeah. I gotta go to bed. Yeah. <laughs> that happened to me that happened to me the other day. Like I've been really exhausted from this Kickstarter. You'll find out, but running yeah. one, man, like it's like your own it's like your only job. Yeah. And so I was just like, I need a day. And I threw on Glow season three. <laughs> it's oh, so God. good. Yeah. And I just went right through the whole thing. And then I was like, okay, now it's time to get some work done. I got some work done. Joe came home and then we watched an entire season of Divorce on HBO. I was like, I just watched two whole seasons of two different shows today. Wow. And and I was I was ready to get back to the Kickstarter by the next day. Yeah. Yeah. Me and <laughs> me and my daughter watched season three of Stranger Things. We binged it the day it came out. So yeah. July fourth nice. they released it. And her and I just sat on a couch all day and watched the whole thing. Mm-hmm. That's that's it was my, good. That's my thing. My my daughter and I, that's our that's a thing that we do together that we love. Um, that's awesome. Man. It's Stranger right. Things. So uh, let's see. Any? Um, let's just. We got a couple of um, questions. Sure. Um, that we had in our in our notes. Um, maybe it's interesting. Maybe it's not. Um, we'll just sort of hit, hit them rapid fire. Um, I'll be the judge of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, have you been to any good cons lately this this past year? Any any interesting yeah. con stories? Uh, well, the one in Albuquerque I just went to is awesome. Not to bring it full circle, but I went around and visited as many Breaking Bad spots as I could. Nice. Saw literally, that. That cool. literally the toll booth that Mike is at in Better Call Saul is the toll is the parking garage for the convention center. Nice. <laughs> I was like, what? It's right there next to my hotel. And I went to um, I went to the hot dog place where Jesse's at every now and then. It's where, that's the episode where he throws out all the money. He's just like sitting out there at the hot dog place. I went to the top of the parking garage where Walt's like spying. Yeah. Um, I could go through all these, but I went to the car wash. I went to Walt's house. I went to everything. Um, so that was, that was fun. I liked it there. I'd never been to New Mexico. Um, as far as like my best shows this year, uh, Seattle, Emerald city. When I saw you, um, that, that's where I saw you, right? No, I wasn't there. No. Oh, what one did I just see see you with your daughter? Well, Oh, Oh, Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah, that's where I live. We, we go to Balticon, or it's uh, not Balticon, I'm sorry, Baltimore Comic Con. Oh, I could have sworn I saw you in Seattle, but Seattle yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Uh, Seattle, Seattle's my new record show for like a normal length show. New York always holds the record because it cheats. It's like four and a half days long, so it's easy to make a lot of money. Sure. Um, but but Seattle, I did really, really well. I think I sold like uh, 250 aggregates or something like that. Wow, nice. Um, yeah, so that was good. And it was a good book show. Like, it wasn't just people buying Ninja Turtle prints that I'd done. It was like they wanted the actual story that I, you know, in these heavy-ass books that I lugged all the way across the country. So I didn't want to bring them back. So. No, I good. think the last time we talked to you, we actually covered the aggregate, too, right? Because that yep. already went to Kickstarter and everything, and it's like it's you're sort of in production. Uh, yeah. How how are you with and what where what's your timeline? I think it was a, kind of a cool question we thought about. Um, with uh, the pipeline and are, are you looking at an aggregate yeah. three? Uh, I, there could definitely be one. Uh, it's a ways off. Um, so when I did that Kickstarter March, I think I told you was, is like my sweet spot. And I, mm-hmm. and so if I have a book that, that needs to be funded and I can do it and it lines up with March on Kickstarter, um, it's, it's a great month for Kickstarters in general, but it's also my birthday. So when Facebook tells everyone it's my birthday. They're messaging me and I have an excuse to message them back. And, and uh, so it's like, a, it, it, it's, it's great for a lot of reasons. So that was part of the reason why I did the Kickstarter for the aggregate book two in March. Um, and then if you noticed on that, which some people did and some people are just now noticing my estimated deadline on that, as far as when the book is done and shipped is until March, 2021, because I knew I would need that funding early to get the head start. And that's actually the exact amount of time that it took me to do book one. So I was able to give it a really realistic uh, estimated deadline, okay. even though it sounds like forever into the future. But I also knew I'd be working on Drawing Blood too, because Kevin and David weren't going to slow down. And so like any creative or artist or comic book, anything, whether you're a writer or an artist, you're constantly juggling 
a few projects at once. Um, I'd always not wanted to do, you know, overlapping Kickstarters like that because the Kickstarter community doesn't, un doesn't always understand the comic book community. I didn't want to get a lot of flack for that, but what's been great is the fan bases have like, they're totally on board. And because I'm such like a social media idiot, I'm constantly telling them exactly what I'm doing of every moment of every day. So they know that I'm actually working on stuff, which is good. Right. You know, if you just were to disappear or something, that's not good. Now, do you, do you bounce back and forth between them? Like do you work on one for a while and then work on another? Cause I know sometimes like when I'm doing creative stuff, I can only look at one thing for so long. And then after a while, it's kind of like, you know what? Uh, I'm not, it's not in me today to do that, but I can't just sit idle. So I'm going to work on this other thing that I'm interested in for a little That's while. Good. And then I'll get back to that. That's good. You can do that. Um, I can do it to a degree. Like it, as long as it's the same um, part of that process, like if I'm doing roughs, for example, like my digital roughs, I can do that on a number of books because I do that process the same way. Or if I'm just doing finals, I can do that. Or if I'm just writing, especially I can, I can write a few things at the same time. But if I was doing like roughs on aggregate, and then finals on drawing blood or something, I think it'll be a little bit more difficult. So what I'm trying to do is kind of just split my weeks once we get rolling um, on drawing blood. For the, the whole, this whole month of August, it's been like pretty much just Kickstarter. I've been picking away at the pages I'm supposed to be doing for drawing blood. Um, because one of the cool things about drawing blood volume two is once it does fund, we're gonna give you the first issue, issue five digitally um, fully finished. Um, and the idea was to get that as early into September as possible. It's looking like okay. realistically probably by the end of September, but it's soon. I'm almost I'm almost there. Nice. Um, so, so yeah, it's hard for me to bounce back and forth. But if it's the same type of work, just two different projects, I think I can usually pretty much swing it. Hey Pete, don't you remember that? Like uh, Ben is like his own slave driver. Like he won't even let himself pee until he yeah. gets a certain amount of work done. Remember he was telling no, us about that. No peeing, no eating That's until right. like I finish a page. <laughs> So, so I, Mike, I, I, that's a, it's a common thing. I do that too. Sometimes I'll be sitting in my, I was sitting working and, and writing something, and I'm like, oh man, I really got to pee. But you know what? I need to get through this page before I sit up. Yeah, and yeah. it's like, it's like write faster, write faster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It forces you to just get it done instead of, you know, messing around and you know mm -hmm. taking your time because because once you're done, pee. There's no deadline. Yeah. <laughs> and, and i and i shut down facebook when i'm working like there's been a couple of times where we were we were doing some stuff and mike was trying to get a hold of me and uh, i was busy just banging away at cuba death and uh mm -hmm. i like opened up my thing and i was like dude 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 and i'm looking at my yeah. phone I'm like oh and and like i'll even set my phone upside down yeah so i can't yeah. see the face of it because i don't I'm, I'm like look if if you guys keep bugging me i'm gonna lose my concentration and then i gotta yeah. start all over again so yeah, like it, an hour will go by and i'll have like 50 texts from people like what's wrong with you and i'm like yeah you know even when wrong? it lights up or buzzes or something you'll look you know yeah and and you're like oh man I, I gotta i gotta check it you know so i usually put it i put my phone upside down and as far from me as possible but close enough that because almost everything on my phone is on silent except for my wife okay. so if there's like an emergency and it starts buzzing um can you do that I, know you I can think do that. I don't know. I I just turned every conversation I have with anyone on mute because I check okay. my phone often enough that I don't need it to buzz. I'll just be like, "Oh, he said something," you know. Right. Um, Pete, I think so. That's yeah. Oh, I was gonna say, Pete. I think Apple. I don't know if you have Apple, uh, Ben, but I think Apple has a thing yeah. where you can put everything on like mute all like people or whatever or uh, uh, what mm -hmm. do you call it uh, privacy, and then you could only allow like certain people through. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, All right, yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe I'll have to do and you that. Can, and you can set a time on it, too, I think, where you're like, oh, just for the next 24 hours or something. Mm -hmm. okay. um, but that's that's exactly why it's been so hard to balance the Kickstarter and getting actual pages done this month because it's like I can't shut the social media off. People are like, hey, I want to add this onto my pledge. How do I do it? Or, hey, is my bank charging me now or August 31st? And there's all these questions that you got to right. feel. Ans um, questions that could be answered by other uh, means not not you. <laughs> yeah, uh, things that have already yeah, been written down, search. right? <laughs> I see what you're saying. Yeah, they could search Kickstarter FAQs or something. Yeah. But sure. Yeah. Hey, I've got a I got a good one here. So Howard uh, Donna Donatelli. I'm not sure. I, Howard, if I messed your name up, I'm sorry. Uh, he says I'm taking a crash course on uh, David Avalon right now. Does his previous career as a filmmaker make him easier to work with as a writer? Oh, that's interesting. I mean, I never worked with him 
before he had done film. So I can't say right. either or. But I do think that the the way in which he writes scripts and the way in which a lot of comic scripts are written um, lends itself to that. One of the big things that he does really well that could be tragic if I were trying to draw a comic um, from a script that from someone who didn't know how to do this is actual like stage directions. He knows, you know, um, we have a scene in Drawing Blood Volume 1 where they're inside that theater looking at the stage because they're taking auditions for the Metropolis show. Um, and so there's three people in these seats. And so they need to talk in a specific order depending on where the camera is. If the camera's behind them, you know, the girl who was on the right in the other direction needs to be able to talk first in this way because the balloons oh, can't jump. the balloons, you know? right, yeah, yeah. So that it's really important um, in that regard. So if, for example, he's saying like, you know, we're on our three characters sitting, it'll just be boom, 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 and they'll talk, you know, left to right. But if the camera flips, because we need to see what's happening on stage, like if he's like, oh, this big busty blonde is, is singing off key and she's terrible, and they're all kind of like shaking their heads or whatever, or face palming, then if they're saying anything, I need to make sure, or he needs to make sure it goes left to right again, but in the opposite direction. So, so little things like that are like, uh, there's a lot of scenes with people in cars and so those seats are so stationary It's not like they're out walking around where I could just flub it and have them kind of you know Shifting as they're talking in a car. Right. No one's like no one's switching seats So yeah. it needs to it needs to be in order which is something that you don't really think about until you I mean for him It was probably until he was he was doing scripts and talking about stage direction and stuff But for me, I know how to write that way because I'm used to drawing my own comics and I'm, I know what to look out for like what's not going to work. Wow, um, so he that's does that really, really well. Yeah. Yeah, I might have even thought about that. It's crazy. All the little things. And, and then even from a, an art perspective, I talk about this. I have some uh, online comic book courses on uh, LinkedIn.com or Lynda.com. It used to be L-Y-N-D-A. Mm. Um, but a lot of the like top left to bottom right in every single panel and even the direction of the stuff you're drawing in the panels should lead the eye. And so like none of that is in the script, you know, so that's, that's the job of the artist to like figure that out. But at the same time, the balloons need to do that same pattern. It's so much stuff. Uh, one other thing about the way David writes that I just think is brilliant um, without giving too many spoilers away for uh, volume one here, he does what, like I, I did some pitches for cartoons and, you know, writing the pilot for certain series and things like that. And David does it so well. Cause what, what happens in a pilot, the science of a, uh, of any TV pilot is like, whatever's going to happen that season, that arc happens in the pilot. And then there's like one more thing that happens that goes, Oh shit, we got to do this all over again. And that's the whole freaking show. And every pilot does that. And so drawing blood is essentially like volume one. Anyway, the first four issues, it does it. It's like, Oh, here's his struggle. Here's what he needs to overcome. He does it a little bit. And then he's thrown into the back of a van and it just ends. And you're like, what the hell? Like, right. <laughs> and so we're about to do it again in a different way and the stakes are higher. And that, that kind of writing just, I love that, especially because I've, I've researched that kind of writing and tried to do it myself so well. Okay. Um, Very cool. All right, Mike, we're, we're yeah. coming up on time here for, yeah. for the game. Let's, um, let's get our last questions in. Uh -huh. uh, what do you what you got, Pete? What do you what do you? Uh, uh, just real quick, uh, where where you? Uh, what what's the next big con you're gonna be at? Where you, where can people find you next time around? Where should they come yeah. see you? So there's an awesome show coming up uh, really soon. I believe it's the second weekend in September. It's Manchester, New Hampshire, so it's East Coast near me. Um, and it's a huge turtle show. It's called Granite Con. Um, because granite state new hampshire right. um but it's put on by this comic shop double midnight and they're having like so many turtle artists out kevin eastman will be there with me so it'll be great for drawing blood it'll be great for turtle fans all around the world uh, jim lawson's original turtle artist steve levine's original turtle artist all the original uh four turtle voice actors from the cartoon show that i grew up on will be there um and so many more simon beasley will be there he's another friend of uh friend of Kevin's who's also done turtle stuff like the uh, body count book with Kevin. Uh, so that's going to be an awesome show. Second weekend in September, Granite Con. Um, other than that, I've got one in uh, Reno in November. Uh, it's a brand new show by the people who put on Denver Comic Con. Um, and actually before that in October, I'll be back at New York Comic Con. I'll be up in the small press area where I can have a lot of space to sell big heavy books. So uh, um, probably not going to be at Baltimore Comic Con this year? I'm not, do this is like the first year in three years I'm not doing it. Uh, uh, that's all right. and, and I'm not sure why. I, I really liked it last year. I was there last year because the aggregate was nominated for 
uh, best graphic novel for the Ringo Awards. Um, huh. So I got to go to the awards ceremony and drink a bunch of whiskey and, and then watch the book that won five Eisners take the Ringo too. I was like, of course, um, <laughs> but, uh, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and so this year I'm like, I'm not nominated. I'm not going. So, but I'll be back because it's always a good show. Shit. We well, have to well, nominate him. Yeah, keep, yeah. keep an eye out because my daughter is so happy this year. So she, she likes to cosplay now. That's, that's her. She loves to go to conventions and cosplay. She's getting into it. Um, and so, so last year we went as, uh, as 11 and Hopper, right? Oh, cool. So, so this year she's going as spider Gwen and I may, I haven't decided yet, but I might go as uh, spider-man noir. So we might go oh, like into the spider verse uh, team. Nice. So that'd be sweet. Yeah. So, um, You'll have yeah, to talk I, like Nick Cage all weekend. Hey there. You know, yeah. I mean, hey, I'm just wondering about that Spider-Man there. Yeah, I just the first time I heard that, I thought it was Ron Swanson. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. It sounds so much like him. I was just like, I, I, I told her, I was like, I am not squeezing this gut into, <laughs> you know, a regular oh, Spider-Man outfit. Well, yeah. I wasn't gonna say anything, but you could easily be Burrito Peter with the sweatpants. There you nice. go. Oh, I you could know, be. I could. Be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Except I have no hair, so there's that's that true. You you would need the like quaff there. Dude, I um, hate wigs. I can't. I I can't. Let's, yeah. that, so every time I've like thought about cosplay, I'm like, I need to have a bald character because I can't stand wigs. I make my head sweat. So. I do that, but with beards. I'd always wanted to be like Robin for Halloween. I mean, in my adulthood, for some reason, and I've always had a beard, and I won't shave it. Right. So I need to oh. do, I need to draw a Robin with a beard and then make that canon and then there you go. Play as yeah. it. All right. Nice. So nice. uh let's see. Uh Pete, I'm <laughs> gonna start I'm gonna start getting the game stuff ready. So okay. if you could just uh kind of read out some stuff um that where we could find Ben. Sure. Yep, yep. All right, so everybody make sure you go check out uh you know www.drawingbloodcomic.com. Um, you can check out Kevin Eastman's Drawing Blood Volume 2. Mike made a bit.ly, so it's bit.ly forward slash kedb2. Uh, it's all capital, so it's capital K, and it matters. Trust me. Yeah. It's capital K, capital E, capital D, capital B, 2. The number 2. Uh, make sure you check out Bishart, B-I-S-H-A-R-T dot net, and bishstore.bigcartel.com and all the links are in the, the notes and stuff yeah. Um, yeah and then also as he said a big social media um i'm not going to say the w word but a big social media person uh at bishart on twitter and instagram yeah instagram's a great place to see a lot of my work in progress yeah. stuff and teasers and um, it's been blowing up lately. I, I was like just under 7,000 followers the other night and I was like showing my wife. I was like, I'm like 16 followers away from 7,000. And the next morning I was at like 7,100. And I was like, what the nice. hell happened last night? Nice. Uh, I think there's, there's gotta be a point where you like hit that thing and it just goes. I don't you're like know, a, I want to find it. You're like a legitimate influencer. I yeah. need to be in it. We we're just yeah. talking about this. I need to do whiskey and yes. I need to do steaks. I need like yeah. Omaha steaks. Right. Uh, that'd be so, great. It, well, I mean, with, with your work with the turtles, you could easily get some kind of pizza thing maybe going, but you know. I'd, I'd take it. Um, yeah. A few of those Bish kids I told you about uh, when I was working hard uh, wrapping up Drawing Blood Volume 1 a while ago, they were sending pizzas to my studio because they right. know the address there. Yeah, it's great. Okay. Free dinner! <laughs> yeah, great All guys. All right, here we go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run the game music now. Game okay. All right. music. Okay, am I reading this or are you reading this, Mike? Am I doing this or you doing this? I'll, I'll read Star it. Star Wars stuff. Okay. I'll read it. We're yeah. not. You know what? I changed my mind. I have a whole Breaking Bad section. We're gonna do Breaking Bad instead. You threw me for a loop. Oh. You me. asked me. You asked me if I knew anything about Star Wars. I forgot then... about your Breaking Bad obsession. All right. I'm okay. Scared. It's it's game time with the Mythwits, ladies and gentlemen, and I am your game master. Actually, Pete and I are kind of tag team in this a little bit, but. Uh, Basically, we have taken questions from the Cube of Death trivia game, returning soon to Kickstarter. Uh, each round, I will uh, actually, Pete will ask Ben a trivia question. Before he answers, uh, I'll go around the room and ask Pete and myself whether we think Ben will get the answer correct or if he will get it wrong. Um, Pete and I will be uh, wagering. Uh, one, two, or three points, whether he will get it right for one, two, three, or wrong for one, two, three points. 
uh, we based on how confident we are that Ben's geek foo on evidently now some um, Breaking Bad questions. Um, so pressure's on. I'm a little pressure bit. Pressure is on. Hey, <laughs> it's all right. We we all, all are. Right. So it's a okay. it's an even playing field. So um, we Pete and I basically have ten points apiece to start. And yep. uh, Pete, I will hand it over to you. Uh, oh, and by the way, Ben, we will be um, asking you three, three. Um, base, huh? Yeah, three, three baseline questions. So this will okay. give Pete and I, so you can answer these right away. Okay, so right. take these away. ones I can answer. Yes, you can answer right away. Answer right away on okay. these first three. Go, go ahead, Pete. All right. So here's your first one, Ben. All right. So what? Let's see. Let Let's do this one. Um, where are you finding these? Huh? <laughs> oh, so I do finding... my research. These are, these are questions that are in Cube of Death. These are literally oh, in the game. There you so, go. It's a good thing I asked you. It was you almost mean? as if I was part of this whole pitch. <laughs> yeah. <that's... laughs> what, what does Walter White do for a living prior to meeting Jesse Pinkman? Oh, too easy. He's a, a high school chemistry teacher. Right, right. Come Very on. good. Come on, Pete. He's a dodgeball, hey, dodgeball coach. Hey, yeah. hey Mike. <laughs> We start. We have all different categories. Did you, right. did, do you do you have a do you have a, a rubber lined spoon as you're feeding Dude, these? Hey, 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 hey! We're gauging. We're gauging. So there was an easy yeah. one. All right. <laughs> all right. Ben, how old is Walter White when he dies? Oh. Well, when he oh. dies. <laughs> well, at the end of the series, how's that? Yeah. How about that? Mm, I think it's. Uh... Like I know the scene in which they reveal this. He's at the Denny's and he's he's got the uh, New Hampshire driver license. Yep. Uh, live free or die, because that's where I was from before Maine, before I forgot about New Hampshire. Um, I want to say fifty-two. Correct. Yep. Correct, Amanda. All right. Nice. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. And one more. Let's do. I don't want to waste good ones for the game. So let's say. All right. This is. This, this is one you're going to have to take a stab at, but it's a 50-50. True or false, Walter okay. White killed more than 20 people firsthand. Are you talking about with his own hands there? With like, yeah, he killed. Like the, the gun in the back of the car, I don't think that counts, but it might, but I don't know. That might count. Yeah, That uh, might count. Yeah. Well, the answer kind of depends on if that counts. If that doesn't count, I would say it's definitely false, but there were at least like 11 guys there in the end with that machine gun. So I'll give you a definitive answer, but um, yeah, it's hard because I don't know what the question means. It, it, they say firsthand, so it's not like he hired a hit when he did that gun. He did right. he, you do that. So I think that that counts. So if it is more than 20, I feel like it's like 21 at the most firsthand, but I'm going to go ahead and say no because it seems high if we're talking firsthand. Am I wrong? That is correct. False. He, yes. According to my sources, okay. he killed 14 people if you include I knew. himself. I knew it was close. Uh -huh. There you go. Very I, good. I, so he got yeah. three up, three down, Mike. All right. And the and prison one. The prison ones definitely weren't him, but if those were, then there were eleven dudes in there. Yeah, no, so he those, was in way over. He hired people to do those. So that's okay. It. All right, All right well, we so got, here we, we go. got ten minutes. Uh, so let's. Yep. All right, so Ben, we're gonna we're gonna go through. Mike, we'll do. Let's do five of these. Okay. Okay, so these these ones I don't guess yet. Don't I, don't guess. Don't reveal and don't give it away. Like don't right. like poker face. Poker face. And you're keeping right. score, right? I got the score. Okay. All right. All right. Where, I, and I have I have the camera on Ben, so read them right. away. All right, here we go. All right, Ben, your first one. Um, what secret ingredient does Jesse Pinkman put in his meth? Mike, what do you think? I'm going to say he knows this for three points. Okay, yes, for three points. Man, um, he's got to know this one. Seen it 11 times. Yeah. So, Mike, I'm going to have to agree with you. Yes for three. Go ahead, Ben. What do you think? What's it, What's in here? Chill, chili P. Captain chili P. Yes, <laughs> yes. Excellent. Excellent. I could do a whole show like this forever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, glad you, I'm glad you like it. Ben's right. second yeah. passion. 
that's we we try to we try to uh, 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 what is it uh, craft our shows for our guests. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. Let's do. Oh, here's a good one. What is the name of Walter White's daughter? I'll go first. I'm going to say that's kind of a tough one just because, I mean, it's like you won't, you might not remember something like that. And then somebody will say, oh yeah, that's right. But I think, I'm going to think Ben's going to know this one, but I'm not going to go three. I'm going to go two. Hmm. I'm going to say he knows it uh, for three. Oh, you're going all in. Okay. All right. All right, Ben. So, what's funny? It's going to be an either or. You, I know you're going to say it's either this or that. I know it. Oh, God damn it. No, no. As you were talking, I was like, "Oh shit!" And then you guys talked long enough that I, I did figure it out. It's Holly. Holly, oh, <laughs> correct, Amanda. Look at this. Yes. But at first, I was like, "I can't not know this. What the hell?" <laughs> But I did right. misplace it exactly like you thought I would. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because it's like either I always go Molly or Holly. Yeah, right, yeah, gonna, yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little bit harder on this next one. Oh, okay. Bring it oh, to no, the paint, was... baby. I'm gonna go a little bit harder on this one. All right. What? Is this the last one, or we keep going? No, we got a couple more. What is the name of the meth addict street prostitute who dates Jesse Pinkman? Oh, My... I hate this because I know these, but. Yeah. Ooh, this is a tough one. Oh. All right, I'm going to go first this time. I'm going to say he he knows it for one point. One point. All right, Mike, I got to catch up with you. I'm going to say, yeah, I got to know this. He says her name a bunch of times. Although names are hard to remember. Like, you're like, watch it, watch it, watch it. And like, oh, what was her name? Um, but I'm, I'm going to go. I'm going to oh, I'm going to go for broke, Ben. I'm going to go yes, three. You ever get a Wendy from Wendy? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, I went to the Crystal Palace when I was in New Mexico. Did, I went to the you? hotel, the Crossroads oh, nice. Hotel. Is it, is it uh, really shitty, or do they really shitty it up? Oh, it was. It was exactly like that. And now, because of the show, they've really dressed it up. It's really nice looking. Ooh, stay at the Crystal um, Palace now. So, yeah, the Crossroads Motel. Oh, just real uh, quick, real quick. Paul Noons, always, always go with a quick quip. I, Mike, you might want to put that down. Uh, Thank you. Says, says, tonight, Joe, breaking beards. <laughs> breaking beards. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, Paul, Paul's so funny. All right, <laughs> let, let's go a little. All right, God damn, can I go a little harder? I'll go a little harder. All right, yeah, let's, let's see you've got to bring the hardest one, bro. Uh, I'm going to leave the last one as the hardest one that I okay. can think of. All right, on my list. we got two more, right? Yeah. We Once the game more. is over, give me the hardest one that way like if i get it wrong it's okay because it's the hardest one It'll okay a grand finale for no points when it's all Dude, over. like you know you I need know to it. you need to allow us to like it needs to be hard enough for us to think maybe you would get it wrong for us to be right. com competitive too so you know Oop, we're freezing again yeah we're I'm back okay. Yeah, okay you're good all right so this one's a little bit harder i think what book does Hank Schrader find in Walter White's bathroom that reveals Walt's secret? Do you remember this one, Mike? Yeah. Oh, I I remember the author. I don't know if I remember the book. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know the name of the book, not the author. I'm going to say. I'm, I'm gonna, yeah, go ahead. Go, go ahead. ahead. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, I'm going to say yes for one. I'm going to say no for two. Oh, excellent! Here we go. Now we're getting into it. Now we're getting into it. I, right. I, I feel like uh, I feel like I'm I'm one with with uh, Ben's breaking brain. Okay. All right, Ben. You're not you're not far off. You guys have good instincts. You're like, oh, it's one of those things, and and it is. As soon as you mention it, and I think and I think and I think, and now I think I know what it is, but I could really be wrong. I know it's Walt Whitman, of course, mm -hmm. but I want to say Leaves of Grass. Yes. Ooh. All right. I, I hey. pulled, I pulled nice. To my yeah. other favorite, WW. That's nice. right. Hey. And for, any, for any of our audio listeners, because we do have a, we have an audio version of this show, uh, we're coming down to the last question. Mike is at 15. Pete is at 19. Still anybody's game, because six points could easily go either way. Um, all yeah. right. Hey, Pete, you earned that one. That was a good one. Yes. Yes, I did. All right. That so, was close, and, though. And, yeah. and let me tell you, 
this this is the art of writing good trivia. This is why it took me eight years to write this game because the trivia can't be too hard and it can't be too easy. You know, and I'm reaching from different categories. So I'm going from easy and advanced. So some of these ones that are really easy are from the easy category. So anyway, um, all right, let's do, let's do, which one is harder? Cause I'm like, okay. This, I think, I don't know which one of these two is harder. They're both hard. But I'm going to go with with this one. I think this is the le the lesser of the two. So we'll see. Um, this chemist takes Jesse Pinkman's place in Gustavo Fring's meth lab and is later killed by Jesse. And I'm going to say, I'll go first, Mike. I'm going to go no for one, just because, like, it just the character was only on the show for a couple episodes. I mean, he's kind of featured, but like, I don't know. I, I just think it's, that one's a little bit of a hard one to remember. Mm. Well, I see you're one for no, and I raise you. I know what you said, one for no? One for no. I see you're one for no, and I raise you three for yes. Ooh, three Ooh. for yes. Ooh, you could pull ahead. I think Opposite. you could. Okay. Um, look, I've got no horse in this game. I don't care which one of you wins so i'm not going to play favorites but it's gail bedecker nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. savant savant yeah. well actually mike and i are way too many times i mike... you're making me want to watch it again though this is the problem mike and i are now tied believe it or not believe it or not oh god all right, all right so you know what we're just going to do a sixth one it's going to be a tiebreaker mike you and i we're all just right. going to have to like pick a different we're going to have to go different okay, right? okay. Just... all right so who kills Hank Schrader? Mike, I'll you know what? Ooh. I'm gonna be a G. I'll let you go first and I'll take the opposite. Oh, that's a tough one. Okay. Um uh, I'm gonna say look, he's turning his head too. <laughs> I'm, not... I'm gonna say uh he knows it for two. Knows it for two. I'm gonna say he knows it for three. <laughs> well, look, you don't know. It could be either. Oh, shit. Be, I don't know. These one of us is going to win, right? One of us is going to win. Yeah, one of us is going right. to win. That's right. right. All, right. All, right. All, right. All right. Who won? Who won? Oh, God. You guys, I've had too much whiskey. I know it's Todd's uncle, but I forget his fucking name. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, ooh, what is God. it? All right. So, Mike, you win, buddy. Mike, wait a minute. Hold on. What's it? What's his oh, name? It's driving me crazy. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, it's uh, Uncle. I don't remember it. He kills all the guys in the prison. Dude, I, I know. I'm willing to make Killing it. Me. All right. It's Jack Welker. Jack. Uncle I never would have got, I never, ever would have got the last name, no matter how many times I watch this well, show. But I Uncle I do Jack. remember it being Jack. Yeah. Because uh, he's on the ground after he's been shot. He's looking for a cigarette. And he's like, wait. Wait, wait. Well, it's just like, pow. <laughs> so good. <laughs> yeah, I would have given you Jack. Jack would have been good enough. All Uncle right, Jack. so Mike. Mike is our winner. 16 to my 15. Good that job, That was a good game. Yeah, that yeah. was a good game. Yeah. Excellent. I thought I was going to get them all, and it would be super boring, but I, you stumped me right there at the end. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, so I did was... guess right. That was the harder of the two. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, some of the other ones watch were that like, show again. Some of those were like, you know, name Jesse Pinkman's three drug runners. Um, oh, that would have been a good one. Hey, all right, what do you know? You know that one, Ben? It's what? Combo, Skinny Pete, and Badger. Combo, yes. Skinny Pete, and Badger. Yep. Brandon Mayhew, Kristen Ortega, and Skinny Pete. And I, I, I would take their their streak. Yeah, I yeah. I that. probably uh, wouldn't have got their real names. I know. They, yeah, Skinny Pete. I don't think they ever say it, but no, they never say definitely it forgot. I knew his name was Brandon, but I didn't mm -hmm. know Ortega. And here's uh, here's one of my favorite ones. This is one gets everybody until they say it, until, until you say it. So, and, and we'll wrap the show up after this. Before his partnership with Walter White, Jesse Pinkman operated under this pseudonym. Yeah, it's Captain Cook. Captain, Captain Cook. Cook. Yep. <laughs> On his license plate. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right, that's it, Mike. Wrap oh, up this show, baby. Oh man, that was an outstanding game thank you so that much one. guys that yeah, was thank really you. good um who'd have thought that me just deciding a last minute hey just in case we don't have anything to talk about let me just throw this these little you know tidbits about what i've been doing you know like watching yeah. guys and that just that just threw it i mean not not uh took us on a 
off the rails. That took us like on a on a better trail. Yeah, it a was kind of a coincidence because yeah. a viewer, a, a viewer or listener had asked about the fish, and the fish has the blue meth in his mouth, and it says Heisenberg, and so yeah. Yeah, it really came right. from that. That's there right. There you go. All right. Change the okay. whole show. <laughs> yes, for the better. For the yeah. better. All right, I am closing as soon as my mouse. Where is my mouse? Here it is. All oh, right, nice. I am closing it out now. You've just enjoyed another awesome, 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 awesome episode of The Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate, and make sure to share your favorite episode on social media, like this episode. Uh, help spread the Mythwits love everywhere over the all over the entire planet, uh, at least in the, in the Baltimore sewers. Uh, tweet us at Mythwits. Uh, that's me. I usually take care of that. And check out Mythwits.com and uh, shout at us at uh, Mythwits on Facebook. Mythwits is TS is a TSR Podcast Network production. Uh, check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows like Game School, uh, the show where they interview designers about their games, deep dives into the mechanics and and do deep dives into the mechanics, and play a short demo of the game to see it in real time. Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like, share it in all the places. Just don't edit it and don't try to defeat it, to defeat the foot. Pete, what the hell does this say? Don't try to <laughs> defeat it. Don't, don't edit it, don't change it, and don't try to defeat the foot with it. Okay. It's a turtle. Yeah, thing. it's yeah. a turtle thing. Yeah. yeah. But it does sound odd. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in, and we'll see you on next Monday. Peter? Cowabunga, dudes. Woo!